Hello, hello, Awesome Soul here, and we finally have it. It seems like they've been talking about this for about a year now. We have the Gyro Mortar coming this week. So yes, that is a brand new weapon coming within Thursday's update. Here you can see it on screen, and it does kind of look like the barrel of the Ion Distorter mixed sort of with a plasma cannon. I guess that's a fairly decent way of describing it, but I guess what we can do is go through the little preview article they gave us here. This is going to tell all of what we need to know on the weapon, or at least most of what we need to know. There are a few things that we are not entirely sure of just yet, although I do have a theory, and I'll get to that after I read this. So they begin with, if you were paying attention to our social channels last week, you'll have no doubt heard of an incoming audio transmission, which sounds a little bit like this. Many of you were quick to correctly guess the origins of the audio and what the new weapon would be. We're incredibly proud to uncover the latest advancements in mortar-based weapon technology, the Gyro Mortar. With a blast radius of 50 meters, the high damage dealing Gyro Mortar will be a force to be reckoned with when unleashed later this week. Here is all the important data for the new weapon, but please note that this is correct at the time of publication and is subject to change prior to when the update is dropped. So yes, as they said, here is the breakdown. The rarity of this part will be classified as legendary. No word on whether or not we are going to get an epic or lower. CPU is 290, not too bad there. Surprisingly, slightly less than that of the Mega Plasma. The fire rate of this weapon is one projectile every second, which, if you need an example to test out right now, is that of the Mega Rail. The power per shot is actually incredibly low for the amount of damage this thing is dishing out, and that is only 2,282 per shot. To give you some examples, the Mega Plasma uses 2,754 per shot, whereas the Rail Impaler, or the Mega Rail, depending on which one you prefer, uses 6,000 per shot. And when I said high damage, I meant it. This thing deals just shy of 237,000 damage per shot. Remember though, this is a splash based weapon, so that is the damage of a direct hit. The farther out you are of the blast radius, the less damage you will receive. And once more, to give you an idea of just how much damage this is, the Mega Plasma's damage is 95,000, and the Rail Impaler is 154,000, so definitely far and above when it comes to the other weapons. As we talked about earlier in the article, the blast radius of this weapon is 50 meters, so that is exactly double that of all of the plasma weapons. Now I'm sure some of you might be saying to yourself, this sounds like an incredibly overpowered weapon. Well, there are a few things that would lead to it being fairly balanced, at least I would hope so. And if not, there's always patches. The first of these balancing factors is the projectile speed. It is even slower, presumably, than the regular plasma projectiles. They do describe it here as very slow, so of course you can assume from that that it is slower than pretty much everything in the game. So sure, you're dealing a lot of damage, but you're probably not going to be hitting your target all that often, especially if they are a fast unit. So this weapon definitely seems to be more of an anti-tank weapon and an anti-point capturing weapon. So if you see a group of enemies all gathered in one spot, you can easily take them out with the high damage and high blast radius of this weapon. The other balancing factor of this is the health. It's somewhat low for something of its caliber. Only 117,000 here. So a fair bit more than that of the Rail Impaler, but definitely less than the Mega Plasma. I know we kind of bounce back between those two examples, but I think they do make for pretty decent examples, I'd say. The mass, or weight, of this weapon is pretty much as you would expect, at 1,160 kilograms. But that weight doesn't really matter too much 
because just like the flak, this weapon is only usable when you're on the ground. So don't worry, you're not going to be getting the equivalent of mega bombers coming into the game. That would be absolutely terrifying. Definitely glad these are only usable on the ground, which is actually kind of interesting because this is pretty much an anti-ground weapon. Good luck trying to hit a flyer with this thing. So it's an anti-ground ground weapon. A little odd there, but I guess if you think about it, it does make perfect sense. Now, what exactly is this theory I was talking about earlier? Well, if you've been around here for about a year now, you will probably remember the fact that there was a special event, I believe one of the first events that Robocraft ever hosted, and that was the Shipwrecked event. And what this did is changed up how Plasma worked for about a week. How this worked is they increased plasma damage by 100% and increased the explosive radius by 100%. So basically doubling it to 50, at least for the mega plasma, because this was before all plasma splash sizes were the same. However, back then mega plasma had the exact same splash radius as that of the current blast radius for every plasma. And they also increased the time between shots, basically lowering the fire speed. They also lowered the projectile speed, and most importantly, they changed the projectile. As well, they also changed how they exploded, as you can see right here. So I don't know about you, but all of that that I listed there sounds exactly like the gyro mortar, does it not? And the gif that's playing definitely seems like it could be some sort of big, heavy, beefy, lobbed projectile. But the big thing that ties all of this together, the article that I'm reading this off of was written and released exactly one year from the release date of the gyro mortar. Coincidence? I think not. Or maybe it is. But I mean, they have been working on this thing for years now. And even back then, my theory was the whole shipwrecked event was just for them to test out how the gyro mortar was going to work. And as we know, if you've been keeping up with the channel, many setbacks kind of got in place and they had to work on other things and set it aside. And then by the time they got back to working on the gyro mortar, the code was pretty outdated. So then it was even more work for them. So yeah, I can say, with about 95% certainty that this is going to be at least somewhat similar to the final finished product, at least as far as the projectile goes. Or am I completely wrong here? Because I can see this changing a little bit just due to the fact that it does seem slightly too close to that of the plasma explosion. Perhaps adding more smoke particle effects, or maybe just more of the whole shells flying off of the explosion effect. Something like that. But what do you think about all of this? Am I right, or would you personally like to see something different for the projectile? Leave that or any other thoughts you had down in the comment section below. But with that, guys, I of course have been the awesome soul. I thank you so very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.